So the first question that we wanted to ask relative to those movement options are just exactly how long does a striped bass that is tagged in Plum Island Estuary stay? And so what you can see on the x-axis is 60 individual striped bass that we have tagged in 2005 or 2006. And on the y-axis is the number of days they stayed. And so they stayed from three or four all the way up to over a hundred. And so we have a combination, we think, of fish that are using Plum Island like McDonald's versus those that are using it like a summer cottage. And we're only going to talk from now on about the residents or the summer cottage fish. And those are the fish that stayed longer than 30 days. So for those fish that stayed in Plum Island estuary for longer than 30 days, we wanted to know where they were spending their time. And this is a data plot for the fish that stayed longer than 30 days in 2006. And I think you can see there that all of those bars are not the same size. And that would suggest that the fish are spending more time in some areas than other areas. Specifically, they're spending more time in Middle Plum Island Sound and the lower Rowley River than in other locations. We think this is an important finding. So the next question that we wanted to ask was, were all fish spending equal amounts of time in those two hot spots, or were there groups of fish that were favoring one or the other? And I think what you see, in fact, is that there are groups of fish that are doing different things. On the top panel, we actually see that there's a specific group of fish that are actually spending most of their time in the lower Rowley River, and we're calling this the Rowley River Behavioral Group. In the middle, there's a completely different group of fish that is actually favoring Middle Plum Island Sound, and we're calling this the Sound group of fish. And the third would be the group of fish that spend less than 30 days in the Sound, and we call these short-term fish. These are what we're calling foraging contingents. So the last question that we wanted to ask is, what happens to these fish after they leave Plum Island Estuary? And usually when a fish leaves the study area, they're never heard of or seen again. We were extremely surprised that we got a phone call from two of our colleagues who actually said that 35 of the fish that we tagged in 2006 were actually seen in other locations. 15 were seen in Long Island Sound, and you can see that illustrated there. 15 were seen both in Long Island Sound and Delaware Bay, and 5 were seen just in Delaware Bay. So of course we always knew that these were migratory fish, but now we have absolute proof that these are fish that come from either the Hudson River, Delaware Bay, or Chesapeake stocks, which is kind of cool. So I'll sum up and re remind you of the things that we have discovered here. We propose that fish could either use Plum Island Estuary and other estuaries along the Massachusetts coast as a fast food stop, as they would on the moving sidewalk model, or as a summer cottage is what they would use on the estuary specific. And as you can see from this slide, we propose that this has important implications. If they use the fast food model, they can't learn the estuary because they're only there a few days. And maybe conditions in Plum Island Estuary aren't that important for the striped bass growth. But in the estuary specific or summer cottage, they are long enough residents that they can actually learn the ins and outs of the estuary and maybe become sophisticated feeders. Plus, the conditions in Plum Island Estuary could be quite important for their growth. So if we skip down to number two finding, we see that 60% of the fish that we tagged use the estuary specific strategy, that is they stay longer than 30 days, whereas 40% use Plum Island estuary as if it were at McDonald's. So we have actually documented fish that are using the Plum Island estuary in both of these ways. So as you recall from the previous slides, we also saw that fish, once they leave Plum Island Estuary, 35 of them were actually seen in other receiver arrays along the coast. So of course, 
they are in fact part of the coastal migratory stock. The fourth finding was to remind you that we found that they were not using every location in the estuary the same, that they were using middle Plum Island Sound and the lower Rowley as hot spots and were very curious what, what conditions are there that might attract the fish and that's actually what we're looking at now. And finally, we found that actually there are groups of individuals that are behaving the same, but those behaviors are different than other groups within the population. Very often in science, we think of everyone sort of in a population doing the same thing, and you have variations within those same behaviors. But what we have shown here is that there are contingents or groups of fish that are favoring certain parts of the estuary. Some favor the Rowley River, some favor Plum Island Sound. So what we have discussed in the last few minutes is a research project that has provided some very important new information about an important fish in Plum Island estuary, the striped bass. And we have learned some very important and exciting new information about how long these migratory fish actually stay in one place where they stay within the estuary, and even where they go when they leave. And we are now working to put this into a larger framework of how these fish interact with other animals within the estuary so that we can manage these fish better. So before I leave you, I want to really emphasize that what you have seen here is a collaboration of many people and although I'm telling you the story, Sarah Potsky, Linda Deegan, Bob Muth, and Jack Finn were critical in the execution of this, and especially Sarah, who was out in the field doing her master's research. In addition, there were a number of people who have been very helpful, and you see some of these listed here. And for these large field projects, there are really many, many players, and it's important to remember that people have to work together to learn big scientific ideas.